Luminous is telling these holy children to be nice. You should take her advice when she thinks avoiding Rimuru is a bad idea since she has Vildora's support. Unfortunately, it seems that these dreadful clergy have other intentions. Whenever Rimuru is away for even a week, someone is plotting her demise. Our buddies in Tempest are in for a little more trouble. Now that Rhyme has departed and these temple warriors have joined Edward's side, so glad to see Hinata trying to be fair and reach an agreement with Rimuru. Nothing would go wrong if Rimuru hadn't twisted the message Raiheim received, even more so with the arrival of the seven luminaries with whom Hinata has a strained connection she has a gut sensation that something is up. The events surrounding Hinata's impending meeting with Rimuru, accompanied by four holy knights, have recently taken an intriguing turn. The unsolved death of Raidhaim, along with reports that it was all planned by a demon lord, has prompted temple knights from numerous nations to band together and support King Edward. You should expect Rimuru to have a busy time ahead. Hinata has quite the eclectic mix of co-workers. Yeah, Hinata, you made your decision about your foolish behavior while you were with Rimuru, Consider it a plus that you are challenging your assumptions. At least they aren't acting like a complete moron in order to carry out this direct. Plus, Hinata is an excellent thinker. Spectacular seven luminaries. Well, well. Did he not realize he was intended to propagate the Veldere myth and spread lies to them about what was happening? However, I suppose he decided otherwise. On the other hand, maybe my recollection is flawed. Well, I'm not sure. He is now known to be an awakened demon lord, which is awful. The proclamation has been made, LLL. Having friends that are interested in going with Hinata is great. It seems that Ramiru did not intend for it to be the message sent. Hello, Sussy. The seven liminaries, startled by Rizuru expressions, are entertaining. Another thing, the demise of the Archpop. This occurred when I was reborn into a conference room. I mean, at least this week, we got to use a new conference room, and the meeting wasn't so audio heavy. Plus, it was very exciting. It piqued my attention that almost all attendees had a rudimentary understanding of the methods for awakening as a genuine demon king. The problem is that they are only aware of two of them. Ramirez is also unknown to them. It seems likely that the archbishop was murdered and replaced before the meeting, but his testimony of the events on the battlefield was accompanied by vivid memories, so I can't be sure. I thought we had resolved the conference room arc by now. Unless, of course, Rimuru convenes a conference of all relevant parties to tackle the matter of Hainata, Someone obviously tampered with the orb message in order to start a fight. Many new personalities were presented to us, some of whom I particularly enjoyed. I couldn't help but think of a certain Bleach character when I saw the mischievous young knight. So similar in appearance, albeit different in temperament. Regrettably, the priest person was slain. I found it hilarious that Black was so downhearted at his inability to control the situation. Towards the end, Romaro's expressions were so ridiculous, it was funny. Her feelings for Veldora were the only thing that stuck out to me in this episode. While I had an inkling that he was significant, this episode solidified my belief that he is, in fact, tremendous. This is far more true than what I had imagined. Do we have another Yuki fucking on our hands? In contrast, are the angels involved in this? According to Rimuru, everything occurring at once is fishy including the murder of Raheim and the tampering with the message, I wonder what the original message was. Is it only those elderly men that Hinata finds annoying? It was a little confusing, because it was sunny and bright in Tempest while it was snowing in Ingrassa and Luberius. I wonder how far apart those two states are. This time, I hope Hinata listens to Ramuro when he talks to her, since I can already see them disagreeing again. Though it faces the same rushed adaptation, criticisms as other isekai adaptations, Tenshura does its best to dispel them. The writers are being leisurely with this storyline. Time for another episode of The Gradual Reunion, but this time we'll be seeing Hinata's side respond to Rimuru's strategy. Much to Rimuru, Hinata is Tempest's calming influence who warns against becoming overly aggressive and provoking Rimuru would be a dumb idea now that he has Vildora on his side and is a demon ruler. Hanada also notices that Rimuru isn't evil and just needs some sp Before Rimuru's revised letter appeared, ostensibly challenging Hanada to a one-on-one -on -one match, and the luminaries made an appearance. It seems like Falmouth is descending into civil war, and a showdown between the two extraterrestrials is imminent, where politics is rife with absurd events. Hopefully, reasoning minds will eventually win out. The sadness on Rimuru's friend's face upon learning that Hinata is heading her way with a sword says it all, to put it bluntly, he has no interest in combating her. After one episode with a reunion, we get another one with still another reunion. As it turns out, Rimuru has no clue why Hinata is approaching him armed, thus clearly someone or something messed with his crystal ball message. 
It's perplexing that the Archbishop was assassinated just after he gave Hinata the crystal ball. Though it's premature to accuse those three seven luminaries members, as they may have benefited coincidentally from Rimuru and Hinata's potential murderous rivalry, these paladins or isekai folk like Hinata seem to be seen as a danger by the seven luminaries. Our episodes have been well behind schedule and we are about halfway through the first course. It may seem like an eternity and nothing has occurred, but trust me when I say the world building is well worth the wait. Anarchy in Falmouth. That is the strategy, but I don't think Edward will have much luck with it, no matter how many soldiers or mercenaries he acquires. However, I feel terrible for the law-abiding individuals that are being drafted. Yes, Ramuru and Veldora are friends, and Ramuru effectively has Vedora under his control by providing him with excellent comics, thus they should not be tampering with this individual at this moment. In spite of the OP's insinuations to the contrary, Hinata has no plans to engage in a real battle with Ramuru. Recognizing his new role, she realizes he could have had good intentions and isn't out to be antagonistic to humans, and that she might have been wrong to criticize him. That being said, she is fully prepared to let go of grudges, accept responsibility for her actions, and listen to Rimuru's version of events. So I'm confident there will be no fighting. After all, Rehaim gets up and starts raving about how deadly Rimuru is now that he's awakened as a demon lord. His message to Hinata comes off as an invitation for a rematch, so she'll have no choice but go see him regardless of her feelings about fighting. Nonetheless, I really doubt it will be that easy. Finally, there are the luminaries who have been training Hinata and who are now relentlessly pressuring her to confront Rimuru and more specifically, to use the dragon slaying sword they just bestowed upon her to eliminate Vildora. Couldn't be clearer. Here we have it is assassinated so that Falmouth soldiers may be reinforced by Temple Knights and Hinata is riding out to meet Rimuru, but Soka mistakes her for being on the warpath. The situation is becoming worse once again. The other knights and Hinata soon figure out that Rimuru is plotting Edward's impending civil war in the kingdom of Falmouth against Edmaris, which is a great meeting. After much anticipation, the seven luminaries have arrived. Hilarious as it may seem, their plot to have Hinata battle Rimuru is quite clear. They just turned up when Raidheim arrived to inform the Council of the Truth about the conflict, and they were already aware of the obviously altered letter that Rimuru had conveyed to Hinata. If it was really him, Raidheim meets his demise shortly thereafter. I would have thought the meetings would wrap up after tonight, but next week they may reveal the seven luminaries' schemes. Though I highly doubt it would warrant a whole episode, we discovered that Milam and Guy seem to be a distinct kind of demon king, distinct from Ramirez and Ramuro. It seems like Ramuro really pulled off the friend lottery, but now we can see why Ramuro became so famous, so famous so fast. He was instrumental in filling the power vacuum that existed during the War of the Forest of Jura and had one of the primary power centers officially recognize him. You would assume that the Western Church would know about the links between Blumund and Tempest or Dwargan and Tempest, given that they are practically nearby countries to the Jura Tempest Federation, but I see no reference of them. Additionally, I was taken aback by Diablo's lack of command of the issue with the Archbishop. One would think he would have better scouts and spies on his side or at least have someone from Blumen accompany him. Seriously, I didn't think we'd have back-to-back -back meeting episodes. Imagine my surprise when I found out we got to see the whole Hinata meeting instead of just the highlights. Following Hinata's declaration that they should not take action against Rimuru, the meeting was going swimmingly, but all changed when Raiheim walked in and revealed that Rimuru had awakened. Why this one person so casually claims that Rimuru murdered 20,000 is amusing. Unprovoked, my man Falmouth assaulted Jura Tempest. Naturally, Ramuro would not hesitate to murder anybody who dared to harm or ruin his realm. Those airborne chaps have certainly interfered with that Ramuro message. Somebody is already skeptical of what's going on, even Hinata. Apparently, Ramuro versus Hinata will go on to round two. Following Ramuro's transformation into a demon lord, Hinata should expect to have her behind kick. Upon this occasion, I really hope she pays attention to his advice. So Edward is still attempting to replicate Edamaris' strategy despite knowing what happened to him and his 20,000 subjects. As an alternative, is Edward arming his forces to wage a mini civil war with his brother? In any case, I would be thrilled to see Ramuro use Megado once again in the event that Edward attempts to assault Jura Tempest. Either Rehaim was murdered and replaced before he could reach the conference, or they managed to alter his mind beforehand and then murdered him. It's quite evident that Rimuru's message wasn't meant to be a one best one call, and I'm pretty sure the truth about what transpired on the battlefield wasn't intended to be shared either. Those seven luminaries guys murdered Rayheim, created a duplicate of him, 
and rewrote Rimuru's letter to target Hinata. It's plain to see. Sly plotters strive to incite animosity by spreading false information and misconceptions. This is something I'm not sure I understand. It seems that next week's show will be much better than last week's, which was already uplifting. We made it through the meeting.